I believe that our skulls are absolute domains of privacy. That is, I don't believe that the state should be allowed to come in and get information from my brain even with that warrant. They can come into my house, they can search my house. I'm for an absolute right to cognitive privacy. And that means that under no circumstances should anyone be able to, should the court or the state or anyone else be able to mandate that the private content, what does a right to privacy mean if it doesn't mean the absolute right to the contents of my own thoughts? What if somebody wishes to have their thoughts rifled that's, through to be exonerated in the well, case that's that Frank different. was talking about? If I about. voluntarily <laughs> want this technology, I'm all for it. But you didn't ask the question that most people ask when I say that, which is, what about the terrorists with knowledge of the bomb in Manhattan? And that really is where the rubber hits the road about this. There will be times if- You always have waterboarding. <laughs> <laughs> but what if it can be done non-invasively? Right, what if, but yeah. what, exactly. What if you could do it without torture, you just have to stick them in an MRI machine and you could get some piece of information? And of course, that's where the real problem happens. Will we allow it in those circumstances? And if we'll only allow it in exceptional circumstances, how will we begin to define exceptional circumstances? And we've all seen over and over again the erosion of those limits when people begin to define all kinds of things as exceptional. So this is something as a society we're gonna to have to work out. But I really believe that it's going to all happen very soon and that it's very important for everybody to think about where they would want those limits set, because this is going to be a conversation that as a society, our society and, and Germany and every other society is going to have to figure out where they're going to set the limits on these technologies.